Welcome 2D to your next lesson on factoring trinomials. Our goal today, I can factor complex trinomials, those with a coefficient other than 1 in front of the x squared. So we're going to take a look at complex trinomials. Uh, this here is the general form of a complex trinomial, the a with the x squared, the b with the x, and the c is the constant term on the end. And um, any time that we have an a out in front of the x squared or some number in front of the x squared that isn't 1, um, we consider it to be complex trinomial factoring. So let's see if we can spot some patterns. Uh, I've expanded these things and notice that these two signs uh, are different in the brackets. So this is the case where we have different signs in the bracket and this is the case where we have the same signs in the bracket and I want to point out a few things. Uh, the first thing is that the same as we had before, this last number comes from the product of these two. This last sign is always going to be negative because we're multiplying two things that have different signs to get this 10. Um, notice that the two middle terms have different signs. So when the two middle terms have different signs, when we combine them, we have to take the difference of those two middle terms. Now over on this one, um, since the signs here are the same, that means that this sign is always going to be a plus. This 10 comes from multiplying the 5 and the 2, same as over here, same as simple trinomials. Uh, and since the two signs in the middle are the same, when we combine them, we're actually kind of adding them together, and so we get a sum right in here. So when we have the same signs, this middle term is a sum of these two things, and when we have different signs, this middle term is a difference of these two things. So let's kind of sum that up in this little chart and you can fill it in as we uh, as we talk about it. So once again um, I'm pointing to this last sign here and it's negative if the signs are different, positive if the signs are the same. Um, these two numbers in the middle are the product of the inside terms or the product of the outside terms. If you're thinking about it in terms of FOIL they're the O and the I terms. Um, this 10 always comes from multiplying the two constants that are in the, in the brackets. So it's the product of the last numbers in the brackets. Um, this 6 here is new now, but notice that it came from multiplying the 2 and the 3. So that 6 is the product of the first numbers in the brackets. And of course the 11, uh, this came, and if we ignore the signs and just go with the numbers that are there, uh, 11 came from finding the difference of those two things because the signs were different. Uh, if those had been the same, this would have been uh, 19 and been the, been the sum. So it's the sum of the outside and inside products if they're the same signs, and the difference of the outside and inside product if they have different signs. And again, we're treating the signs and the numbers uh, as two different things here. The process of factoring complex trinomials is for the most part guess and check, but with a few tips it becomes educated guess and check. So let's have a look. Um, what we know about this thing, factor 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Uh, the first numbers in the brackets have to multiply to 3. Okay, um, So we only actually have one choice, it's 1 and 3. And the last numbers in the bracket have to multiply to 2. Again, only one choice, 1 and 2. And there's going to be my first tip. Always begin by putting a guess in for either the first or the last numbers in the bracket, whichever has the least number of factors to choose from. Uh, in the case of a prime, there's only one option, so, so put it in right away. Uh, we have a choice here because both the first and the last are prime. So I'm either going to put the 1 and the 3 in and then see where I'm putting the 2 and the 1, or I'm going to put the 2 and the 1 in and see where I'm putting the 1 and the 3. Uh, I think I'm going to start with um, 3 and 1. And now I either put a 2 here and a 1 here or the other way around. So let's put the 2 and the 1 in there and see. I'm looking for, and there's a reason I have these swoopy things here. Um, since the signs, this tells me that the signs are different. And I'm not going to put them in right away because they're different. Since the signs are different, I'm looking for the two products to have a difference of 5. So 3x times 1 is 3x. And 2 times 1 is 2x, and those have a sum of 5, not a difference of 5. So I think I've got them in the wrong order. So let's take uh, take my eraser here and 
and get rid of these things. And let's try that again. Uh, let's put the one here and the two here. So now I've got one X and three X times two from this big swoop out here is six X. Now the one X and the six X do indeed have a difference of five. Now we just have to figure out where am I going to put the signs because I know they're different and since when these two middle terms combine I actually have more negatives left over I must have had more negatives to start with so that had to have been a negative six and if I follow the swoop in order for that to be a negative six this had to be a negative two because this 3x out front is positive we're not going to change that sign so it has to multiply with a negative to make negative six and so this must have been a plus and we're done you can double check it by expanding it the same as you did with simple trinomials so, since the last sign is negative, we know that the signs in the brackets are different. So the outside and inside product will have a difference of 5. Don't, that should say don't put the signs in until you have found the numbers, then the bigger product will have the same sign as the middle term in the trinomial. So that's everything that I just said there when we were walking through it. Our next one, example 2, factor 6m squared plus 13m minus 5. Uh, so 5 is prime. So the only way I can get a 5 at the end there is if this was a 5 and this was a 1. Now, my choices for 6 are 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. Now let's see what I have for a tip here. The tip says, when you have options for factors to use, it is usually best to start with factors that are closer together. So in this case, the 2 and the 3 are closer to each other and when I say closer together that's what I mean closer to each other so 2 and 3 are closer together than our 1 and 6. The exception to this is if your middle coefficient is quite large when compared to the other two constants in the polynomial and by quite large I mean approaching the product of these two things so the product of 6 and 5 is 30 13 is nowhere near 30 so we're likely best starting with the 2 and the 3. And again, we have an option um, of putting the 2 here and the 3 here, and let's just figure it out. Remember, signs are different. That's what this negative is telling us here, that signs are different. So we're looking for a difference of the middle term, 13. So I've got 15m from this product, and from the outside product, I have 2m. And that does have a difference of 13. Now I just have to figure out my signs. When those two middle terms went together, I had more positives than I had negatives. So um, that means that this 5 has to be positive in order to multiply with this positive 3 to give me positive 15. And to make that 2 negative, this must have been negative. Okay, carrying on. Um, so here's my choices for this one. We want to factor this one. Again, 3 is prime, so let's put a 3 in here and a 1 in here. So I've dealt with that, 1 and 3. Now I have my options for 2 and 4. Now this time, 4 times 3 is 12. And since 4 times 3 is very close to the middle term there, I think I'm going to need this 1 and 4, and I think I'm going to need for the 4 to multiply with the 3 in order to get my number anywhere near that 11. So I'll put the 4 there and a 1 there. Now let's just check. These signs, again, are different, so we're looking for a difference. So this is 12n, and this is 1n, and 12 and 1 do have a difference of 11. Now let's check where our signs go. Um, since I have negatives left over, I must have had more negatives to start with. So I have to put the negative with the 12, which means the 1 is positive. And in order for 12 to be negative, remember this 4 here, uh, is always positive, so this 3 must have been negative in order to make the 12 negative, and that means this is a plus here. Next question. Now, we need to factor this. The first thing you need to realize here is that there is a common factor. I can take 2 out of all of these things, and if I take out the common factor, then my numbers get smaller. So now, I only have to deal with the numbers in the bracket. This 2 stays right out front and it just sits there and it doesn't affect the rest of the question. So now that I have that factor taken out, uh, I'm going to take a look at what I have, what I know here. I know that the front is either going to be 1 and 10 or 2 and 5 
and the back is either going to be 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. Now I've got another tip down here. Let's take a look. It says, always remember to take out the common factor first. This gives you smaller numbers with fewer factors. If your trinomial has no common factors, then neither will your bracket. So you can eliminate any option where you would put two numbers in the same bracket that share a factor. So I can't put two numbers in here that have a common factor, which makes it so that I can eliminate one choice for this over here. Because since... Um, 2 and 2, I would have to put them um, in here, which means that I couldn't put anything in with them that has a common factor with 2, which means I couldn't put 1 and 10 in there because I can't put a 10 in here because it shares a common factor with 2, and I can't put a 10 in here which shares a common factor with 2. Okay, So I couldn't use 10 and 1. I also couldn't use 2 and 5 because anywhere I put a 2, it would have a common factor with 2. So since I can't use either of those things, that actually means that I was wrong with my first guess. It can't possibly be 2 and 2. I can eliminate that option because all of the factors of 10 have at least one um, factor that is even, which makes it have a common factor with 2. So that doesn't work. So it can't be 2 and 2, which narrows down our possibilities. It's got to be 4 and 1. So let's take this and I'm going to put the 4 in here and the 1 in here, though it doesn't matter. Uh, and again, we have to check. 10 times 4 is 40, and negative 13 is nowhere near 40. So it's likely going to be 2 and 5 that I'm putting in. Okay, Likely. And remember, this is a tip. It's not a hard and fast rule. And I know I can't put the 2 in here because it shares a common factor with 4. So that must be where I put the 5, and this is where I put the 2. Now, this tells me the signs are the same, and then this tells me that they're both negative, so I can put them in, and we're looking for, since the signs are the same, we're looking for this to be a sum of 13. So we've got 5p from here, and 8p, and that does in fact have a sum of 13, so I've got the right answer. Now I'm going to factor these, and I'm going to talk through them as I factor them. Okay, this first one here, what you need to know is that there's a common factor of 2. So I'm going to take that 2 out right away and I get 3n squared plus 7n minus 6. Now my choices have reduced significantly and I have this prime number there. So 3n and n are going to be my choices. Now the signs are different, so I'm looking for the outside and inside products to have a difference of 7 when, we um, when the last terms are 6. So my choices for 6 are 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. Now we can use that common factor thing. I can't put uh, a 6 here or a 3 here because those would share a common factor with 3. And this 14 is nowhere near 6 times 12, so I'm going to think it's going to be 2 and 3. And since I can't put the 3 here because it would have a common factor with that 3, I'm going to put the 2 here and the 3 here. And now let's see if we have the correct answer. Remember, we need a difference of 7. So that's 9n on the outside and 2n on the inside, which does have a difference of 7. And now I need the bigger number to be positive because when the two combine I have more positives than negatives as a result here and so this must have been my plus and in order for the two to two end to be negative there had to be a negative there okay now looking at this one don't let this eight and this four scare you that just means that I have more at the front of the brackets and there is a common factor here I'm going to take out a negative three for my common factor and that's going to give me 3m to the 8th minus, remember we're taking out a negative, so it's going to change the signs, minus 7m to the 4th, and then minus 20. So keep that negative 3 out front. Now, m to the 8th here just means that at the front of these brackets, I had m to the 4th and m to the 4th which is good because my middle term has an m to the fourth, so that's what I need. I know I need a 3 and a 1 because that's the only way I can multiply to 3 at the end. And this 20 I have some options for. I have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, uh, or 4 and 5. 
Now I'm looking, since the signs are, in this case, we're looking at this sign here, the signs are different. So since the signs are different, the outside and the inside terms have to have a difference of 7. So what does that give us? Since this uh, 7 is nowhere near the product of 3 times 20, I'm going to start with the ones closer together, which are the 4 and the 5. And since they have to have a difference of 7, I need at least one of them to be bigger than 7. Uh, I'm going to do 3 times 4, which will give me 12m to the 4th, and 5 times 1, which gives me 5m to the 4th. And 12 and 5 do, in fact, have a difference of 7. So we're good. So I need um, more negatives. So this 12 has to be negative and the 5 positive, which means the plus goes here. And the only way I can get a negative 12 is if there was a negative there. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and do these last two and then talk through them. And so there's the answer. And I'll just quickly talk through what I did here. Uh, I knew my choices for 4 were 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. And since 12 wasn't really near 20, not particularly near 20, I decided to go for the two that were closer together. And then take a look at the outside and the inside terms. I knew the signs were the same and they were both negative. And so I ended up with this and see that the outside and the inside terms do have a sum, same signs, they have a sum of 12. Now over here I took the 5 out first which left me with 5p squared plus 14p plus 8. Uh, and then my only choices for 5 were 5 and 1, so I put the 5p and the p in. And then since um, 14 was really not near the 5 times 8, which is 40, I decided to go for the 2 and 4, which were closer together. And I got 5p times 2 is 10p, and 4 times p is 4p. And so and now that concludes this video. Give it a try.